like to speak briefly about a condition called preeclampsia, which is a very common condition occurring in pregnant women and in the immediate postnatal period. It is defined as a blood pressure of over 140-90 millimeters mercury and protein in the urine more than one plus, which usually affects women after the 20th week of pregnancy. Why is it so important that we talk about this subject? It is important because despite advances in obstetric care across the world, preeclampsia and eclampsia continues to be one of the leading major causes of maternal and fetal morbidity and mortality across the world. This means that there, it is responsible for mothers falling sick and even dying and babies falling sick and even dying across the world. And in fact, about 15% of all maternal deaths are directly responsible uh, from preeclampsia in the United Kingdom. And in our country, the, uh, the, it is probably even more. It's about 25% of all maternal deaths are due to this condition called preeclampsia. It has a, there is a five times higher incidence of babies dying from preeclampsia uh, and eclampsia. Now, who are uh, the women more at risk for developing this condition? We know that there are certain risk factors. As always, there is a genetic predisposition. Then women who are in their first pregnancy, women who are carrying multiple pregnancy, women who have uh, their pregnancies at either a very early age or at advanced age, women who may be having prior history of chronic hypertension, kidney disorder, diabetes mellitus, some immunological conditions like antiphospholipid syndrome are more likely to develop preeclampsia after their 20th week of pregnancy. What is the etiology of this condition called preeclampsia eclampsia? That means what are the causes? Unfortunately, we do not as yet know the cause of this condition. But many, uh, many studies have shown that there are certain factors like placental, poor placental perfusion, immunological problems you know, that may be responsible for this condition to develop in certain women but not in all. Whatever the cause may be, finally preeclampsia, the complications of preeclampsia is caused by intense vasospasm. That means the blood vessels across the mother's body in almost all the organs of the body actually are constricted. They are narrowed. Therefore, because of the narrowing of the blood vessels, there is less blood supply through the placenta, causing less oxygen and food to reach the baby and obviously compromising the baby. There is less blood supply to the kidneys, to the liver, to the eyes, to the brain, and which is finally responsible for the dreading, dread, dreadful complications of preeclampsia that we know. How do we screen women for... Uh, before that, let me talk a bit, a bit about the severity. Fortunately for us, preeclampsia normally, when we see them, are in the early or the mild stage. Maximum women are in the mild phase and therefore we will only diagnose them because their blood pressure is 140-90 and they are leaking a bit of protein, 1 plus or so in the urine. Generally, they are asymptomatic. Preeclampsia is a condition where the signs predate the symptoms. Therefore, mostly the women in the early stages will be asymptomatic. However, in certain people, it, the disease can progress to the moderate and to even the severe stage. And then of course, severe preeclampsia, where the blood pressure is 160, 110 millimeters of mercury or more, where the lady might be leaking 3 plus urine or even more in the prote in, uh, protein in the urine, where she might be having symptoms like persistent headaches, sometimes upper abdominal pain, pain over the liver region. Um, she might sometimes be even complaining of visual disturbances. These conditions should alert us to the possibility of severe preeclampsia. 
and along with that certain dreadful complications like a disorder called HELP syndrome where the, baby, where the mother has hemolysis in her blood system, elevated liver enzymes, low platelet count, there are coagulation disorders, all these dreadful complications of preeclampsia will generally be seen in the severe version. And finally, of course, the most dreadful of them is eclampsia, where the woman would present to us with convulsions, sometimes stroke, blindness. So this, uh, but luckily for us, eclampsia will probably be occurring only in about 1% of women with preeclampsia. Having said this, now how we, do we diagnose this condition? How do we diagnose preeclampsia and eclampsia? As because there is as yet no definite cause ascertained for this disease, there is no universal screening test which easily tells us which woman is likely to go and, uh, into uh, preeclampsia. However, this is where the importance of regular antenatal visits is. Because at every woman, despite the fact that we know there are certain risk factors, natural fact, preeclampsia can affect every woman. And so it is up to the mother to attend regular antenatal visits and for the practitioner to be extremely alert at these uh, visits. So, the first time the antenatal visit, we generally take a detailed history. This is very important because we have to ascertain her prior obstetric history. We know that primary gravitas, that means mothers carrying for the first time, are more likely to develop uh, preeclampsia. Then whether she has a history of preeclampsia in her previous uh, pregnancies, whether she's carrying an, uh, multiple pregnancies, whether she's already suffering from certain underlying medical conditions like kidney disease, chronic hypertension, diabetes mellitus, immunological conditions like uh, antiphospholipid syndrome. These have to be detailed, daily elicited during the history at our um, first visit. Then there is the physical examination. Every woman should have her blood pressure checked at each antenatal visit. And it's very important that the blood pressure should be checked when, when she's relatively at rest. That means we should wait, let her wait for about 10 minutes in the antenatal chamber, not charge out from her car and charge into having her blood pressure checked up because this can be falsely high. So she should be at relative rest and the blood pressure should be checked with a proper size cuff for the patient. Also, her urine should be checked for protein. Along with that, we always check the mother's uh, abdomen to see how big, how big the baby size is, whether there is enough lica in, uh, because these are all signs that alert us to the possibility of preeclampsia and fetal compromise from the preeclampsia. Laboratory tests are done, certain baseline tests are done for all the women like hemoglobin, hematocrit, liver function because we know elevated liver enzymes is a sign of a progression of the disease, kidney function, serum uric acid sometimes is a good screening test for the severity of uh, development and severity of preeclampsia and also coagulation factors are checked because we know that coagulopathy is common in severe forms of this disorder. How often these tests are repeated is obviously dependent upon how severe the disease is. Finally, ultrasonography we often have to do because we need to assess that the baby is not being compromised so babies' measurements are taken, the amount of lycra is taken, uh, measured, and as well as Doppler flow of the vessels, umbilical artery and other vessels in the baby are checked to make sure that the baby is not getting compromised from deficient oxygen and nutrition to the baby. So, how about the treatment? We know that preeclampsia, eclampsia, is a condition which develops only in pregnancy and sometimes in the puberal period too. It can develop for the first time, but mostly it appears after the 20th week of pregnancy. As such, pregnancy is responsible for preeclampsia and hence the definitive treatment is obviously delivery of the baby. However, the timing of the delivery is very, very judicially, judiciously um, assessed because uh, this depends upon the gestational period when the patient will present to us. 
and the severity of the brain disease. Thus, obviously, if the patient presents to us at 34 weeks or so or beyond, it, uh, the treatment becomes easy for us because delivery is an option, easily adoptable because we know that the chance of prematurity is less. However, if the patient presents much earlier than 34 weeks where we know that the chance of prematurity is very high, we naturally have to take a very judicious call as to balance the advantage we are giving the mother from delivering the baby and the risk we are putting the baby to through because of the risk of iatrogenic prematurity. This obviously becomes much easier if we have recourse to a good neonatal unit where we, which is capable of looking after very small babies. So in conclusion, I would like you to take home the message that because we do not know the cause of preeclampsia and eclampsia, it is ex we as yet do not have a screening method and we do not primarily cannot prevent the appearance of preeclampsia. So what we can do is prevent its progression and make sure that the baby does not get too affected by it. Thus the importance of regular antenatal visits which all mothers should avail of and all clinicians should be aware to be alert uh, to the impending signs and symptoms of preeclampsia, especially the severe version. The delivery of the patient should ideally be done in a tertiary unit which has good intensive care facilities and which, uh, where, uh, which is capable of looking after very sick, very small.